from Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, on TV Sports presents college football action as the Michigan State Spartans take on the Michigan Wolverines. Michigan Football 1980 is brought to you by Bush Beer. Remember, don't just reach for a beer, head for the mountain. Hello again, everyone. Larry Adderley along with Jim Brandstetter for this Michigan football telecast, and this is the one that divides the state. This is the one that divides families. Sometimes families even leave their roots in East Lansing and go to Ann Arbor. An amazing thing that someone would turn on a family tradition like that. The only reason I went to Michigan is because I was the only one smart enough in my family to get in. <laughs> We didn't want you at Michigan State. Your brother was nicer. Yeah, that's probably true, but we won more games against Michigan State. Your father went to state, too. And <laughs> probably with Muddy Waters or close to that era. He was and this little... is Muddy's debut as a coach. That's right. Uh, my father was a little bit before Muddy Waters, but Muddy Waters had a great career at Michigan State as a player. But he is entering his first game as head coach against the Wolverines, and that's a little different story because he's got 100,000 people hanging around and... Uh, it's a whole different ball game when you're coaching against no, uh, this no, ball no, club. No, 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 no. 100,000 people doesn't mean a thing. They don't block. They don't tackle. They just make noise. That's, you got to do it on the that's field. That's what they say about Notre Dame, too, but somehow the Notre Dame people help out. Listen, Bo even <laughs> says that Michigan State is superior in one department. And they are. I think he has a point in the fact that the kicking game at Michigan State is just outstanding. Morton Anderson, their place kicker, and Ray Stackowitz, their senior punter. Stackowitz is an All-American choice, averaging 48 yards. And when they get inside the... 30 or 40 yard line, Michigan State is capable of scoring with Morton Anderson. And that's the big key, I think, to Michigan State's offense is the fact that they can play field position football with these two guys. Regardless of the outcome, it's great fun. Michigan State is my school. <laughs> Michigan is his school. You know now that objectivity is out the window. They're ready for the kickoff. Michigan State won the toss and has elected to receive. Otis Grant, number nine, goes deep. Bruce Reeves is back there with him, as is Number 27, defensive back Thomas Morris. And there's Ali Haji Sheik's kickoff sailing deep and through the end zone. No chance for a return. First and 10, Michigan State at their own 20-yard line. Let us point out, Larry, first of all, that the Michigan uh, State Spartans will be working into the wind of the first quarter. They won the toss, elected to receive. The Michigan defense uh, decided we'll kick it off to them and take the win. And I think they might have done that had they won the toss anyway because there is a strong breeze. Offensive line for Michigan State with a few adjustments. So although Jones, Kimichek, and Tony Gilbert are the receivers, John Leister, the sophomore quarterback from Great Falls, Montana, the man who ignited the Spartan offense to some extent last week in the Notre Dame game when they put 21 points up on the board and lost to the Irish 26-21. Long count for Leister as he looks over the Michigan defense and throws to the wing. Steve Smith can't hang on. Incomplete. It's second and ten. Many teams have run on the Michigan defense this year, although judging from play number one, it appears that Muddy Waters plans to try to pass against them. The Michigan defense, linebackers, Andy Canavino, a standout back there, and Marion Body, Carpenter, Jackson, and Reeves, the defensive backs. Second down, 10 from the 20. A little adjustment in the backfield. Pullback is Andy Schramm, and he goes in motion. Pitches to Smith. A little opening. Steve Smith gets seven yards to the 27-yard line. Marion Body makes the tackle. Bo <laughs> <laughs> Schembechler with a great deal of respect for this back, Steve Smith. Absolutely. Uh, they caved in the linebacker that time. There was a hole on the outside. Smith coming into his final year has over 2,000 yards rushing for the Spartans. He's fifth on their all-time list, and he needs just... 446 more yards to be their career leader ahead of uh, the flea, Herrick Allen. Third and three, Michigan State, 27-yard line. Schramm is up close behind Leister. Leister, Leister gives the Smith all down. He is wrapped up, but he fell down, actually. Cedric Coles, 92, on top of him, and that'll turn the, uh, the down marker around, make it fourth down, loss of a couple in a punting situation for State. Cedric Cole stops the play right off. They don't get the trap block from the guard, number 69, Rod Strata, and Cedric Coles is in there just a little bit too early, and now we get into the punting situation. Stackowitz, the great Michigan State punter, hitting it now, and the wind has shifted. He'll be going with the wind, it appears. Anthony Carter is deep. Just the man Michigan wants to receive a punt. A 
low putt that should take a good bounce at the Michigan 40-yard line. Not that good. Goes out of bounds. 38 where it is marked. First and 10, Michigan. Very good field position to start from. I think maybe the strategy of Michigan State to receive the football has uh, hurt them in the sense that Thackwitz didn't get the good kickoff, and the Wolverines start with their offense uh, in good field position. The receivers, Betts, Mitchell, and a Anthony Carter, and the offensive backs with John Wangler starting at quarterback today. That'll be the second straight game. Michigan State has chosen to start a couple of seniors in that defensive backfield, notably Mike Marshall out of Detroit Southwestern. And off to Ricks. Big opening. Lawrence Ricks bangs it up near a first down. Carl Williams, a senior, also starting in the defensive backfield for Michigan State. Straight, He's out of Royal Oak Shrine. Straight draw. There's a big hole there. This is one of the problems Michigan State has had in the early going. They are ninth in the Big Ten Conference in rushing defense, giving up an average of 258 yards a game. And I think the Wolverines will try to exploit that early on the ground between the tackles. Second and one for Michigan. There's an illegal procedure as Lilja, the Michigan center, moved the ball. Penalty flags it down, and they are discussing it. Illegal procedure, Michigan State. The only thing I can think of, Larry, is that when Lilger moved the ball, uh, the center has that right to change the ball so he gets the laces where he wants them, where the quarterback wants them. The defensive man saw him move the ball and thought it was going to be a snap and jumped across the line, and uh, the Frank center has that right. Frankly, it looked like a snap, though. He didn't roll the ball around to get the laces up. He moved it. Okay, green and white. <laughs> First and ten, Michigan. Michigan State 47-yard line, and Wangler looks for Allen Mitchell. That's incomplete. Mitchell was open deep behind Betts. Betts was open but couldn't hang on. Second and ten. Ball was there just to drop pass. Betts usually fairly sure-handed, but ball just dropped. As the pass was there, Michigan State came with the blitz. It was picked up. Wangler had enough time to get him free. So we take a look at the Michigan State defense that has been run in quite a bit this year. Although there are some replacements in there already because of some injured players. Last week's contest against Notre Dame. Second and ten, Michigan. Wangler has Edwards and Ricks, and he gives to Ricks, and Ricks goes right down. Big hit by Johnny Lee Haynes. Came crashing through and had Ricks simultaneous with a handoff. Haynes has switched from linebacker to defensive line this past spring, and he's found a home. There, it's very simple. He just beats the block of John Powers, gets into the backfield. Loss on the play of four yards. It's third and 14. The ball back now on the Michigan 49-yard line. Most people it would expect pass in a situation like this. And Wangler gives them what they would expect. Over the middle. Anthony Carter dropped it. He was open. Hit him right in the stomach and bounced out. Well, that's two in a row. Michigan has dropped. I can't blame Wangler at all. Both passes were there. Both passes just plain old dropped. Anthony comes on a post pattern. He comes underneath the deep coverage. He beats his one-on-one -on -one man over the middle, and Wangler throws a perfect strike, and you won't see this often. Anthony Carter just drops the ball. Mike Marshall in front of him, but certainly did not have him covered up. Don Bracken, the Michigan freshman putter, is set to kick to Thomas Morris, defensive back from Long Beach, California, and a good defensive back. Kick away from about the 40-yard line for Bracken, heading for the far sideline. Good bounce. Morris grabs it at the 7-yard line and is buried. They'll call it the uh, 8 or 9 right between it. No return at all. Good coverage by the Wolverines. Michigan State was unable to move the football, so let's pick up the action later in the quarter. First down, Michigan. Edwards, straight up the middle off the tackle he gets just his shoulder from 32 van williams it bounces off that for even more yardage michigan state is guessing on defense that time they had three deep backs over on the side of anthony carter and they ran the trap play with the fullback up the middle and when anthony broke the line of scrimmage there was really nobody in that secondary to get him as he gets good yardage for the first down first and 10 15 16-yard line of Michigan State. Michigan on the move. Lawrence Ricks, no room to run this time. And he is set back by John McCormick, number 40. 
among others. McAdoo, 55, and Morris are there, but John McCormick out of Marquette. Had him in his arms. No gain on the play, second and 10. Alan Mitchell checks in, and Fred Brockington comes out of the Michigan lineup. sunshine now. There was some rain earlier in the day, but the skies are beginning to clear. Looking like a good day. All right, both receivers now on the left side for Michigan. Carter in the slot. Mitchell further out. Ricks gets the handoff straight ahead. Near at the 10-yard line before he is met by a lot of white jerseys. Stevens. I think Michigan is running decoys out there. Anthony Carter and uh, Alan Mitchell spread wide left, and then they run back to the right side with Lawrence Ricks. If they break one of those at the line of scrimmage, the secondary is so spread out left that Ricks could possibly break through there and get into the end zone. I think that's what they're using Anthony Carter and Alan Mitchell for at this point. A little decoy action. Keep that secondary spread around. Third down and four. Yes, that is a hole in Larry Rick's pants. Steve Edwards straight ahead. He gets two or three before Van Williams can stack him up. Carl Banks and Moore. Injured player for Michigan getting up rather slowly. Lineman number 67, John Powers. That is short of the first down. It'll be fourth and a yard. John Powers has had a tender ankle for a couple of weeks and uh, probably just got it twisted again. And it's tough to heal when you're playing and you get that ankle twisted a little bit. But Powers is coming out of there. Tough to heal in a game like this anyway. Absolutely. But you know in a game like this, even though it's a minor bruise or a minor hurt, he's going to play. And I expect we'll see him back. Haji Sheik sets for the field goal as Rich Hewlett will hold the ball. Perhaps Hewlett has thrown for this formation and other time, one other time in the season. Got a first down out of it. They'll mark it at the 15-yard line, a 25-yard field goal, and that's what Michigan's going to do on fourth down and one. It is. Sheik's kick is up and good. And Michigan gets on the scoreboard first. A field goal of 25 yards. It's the Wolverines three and the Spartans nothing. Haji Sheik teeing the ball up at the 40-yard line for Michigan after his good field goal attempt. And Otis Grant is deep in the Michigan State end zone, ready to receive this kick. Five minutes left in the first quarter. Not much wind at all right now as Sheik sends another one all the way to the back of the end zone, and Grant says no. First and 10, Michigan at the 20-yard line. yards all they had to go 10 plays that's five a play pretty good drive took five minutes also before the field goal is cashed in by Haji Sheik. I think the only negative thing about the drive Larry is that they didn't get the six rather they got the three. First and ten state at their own 20 yard line. Leister has Tony Ellis now at fullback along with Steve Smith but it's a pass over the middle batter in the air and intercepted by Miriam Body. At the 30-yard line, body knocked out of bounds. 23-yard line. Tom Piet, the Michigan State center, knocked him out of bounds, but that tip ball turns into a big turnover for the Wolverines. Andy Canavino should get credit for the interception, and the man he's the man that tips it. Watch it. It's a straight, quick post. Canavino gets up with a hand, tips it up, and there's Marion Body. That is his third interception on the year, and Michigan is in great shape. Watch Canavino. He sees the pass. He gets back to his drop zone, and then great reaction to get a hand up and get it on the ball. That's just good, quick reaction by Andy Canavino. First down, Michigan at the 23-yard line of state. Langler to Carter. That's the one-yard line or more. Going to be the one-yard line. Anthony Carter very close to being in. I told you that he was being single-covered with Mike Marshall, and they would go to him sooner or later. Michigan caught him in that single coverage. They were doubling him on the inside. They had single coverage on the outside. Anthony ran the flag. Wangler delivered the ball beautifully, and Michigan's in real business now. 
that's the way to take advantage of a turnover. Quickly turn it into something that, well, maybe the points, and they were close enough. First down and a yard for Michigan State one. Michigan leading three nothing and threatening to make it more. Get tough, defense. Edwards and Ricks in the eye behind Wangler. Two tight ends in the offense. Benson Dunaway. Michigan State gathered in about a nine-man line. Lawrence Ricks. Touchdown. Credit the offensive front. You see Bubba Paris over there along with Kurt Becker. They just blow a hole wide open in that Michigan State goal line defense. And there's no question that Ricks has got it in there. Watch the hole develop. The hole is right there, and Ricks just goes over easily as Michigan gets into the end zone following the turnover. It is 9 to nothing, Wolverines, and Ali Haji Sheik will attempt to make it 10. Hewlett sets it. It is good. And 10 it is. Michigan leading Michigan State 10 nothing with 442 left in the first quarter. Sheik eyeing the ball as it falls off the tee. Wind swirling around and does just that. So Sheik re-tees it. Otis Grant is deep for Michigan State again, but he has not had an opportunity to return a kick yet. Two kickoffs by Sheik have both been deep in the end zone. This one is also deep in the end zone. No return. First and 10, Michigan State at the 20-yard line. two plays to cover that 22 yards after the interception. Rick scoring from a yard out. Michigan State's turn again. First down at their own 20. Leister rolling right. Gonna run, but nowhere to go. He just gets back to the line of scrimmage before he is brought down by Robert Thompson. Robert Thompson is developing into an outstanding linebacker for Michigan. He is uh, one of the best that they've got. He is just a junior. He is the champion of the week against South Carolina. He is the leader on the team in sacks. He has five sacks for a total loss of 16 yards. That's first on the team. And Leister, if they go right, if they go two, Robert Thompson is going to have a little trouble scrambling on him because he's been tough all year. Second and ten. Leister makes Thompson cuts back inside but only gets a yard or two before Gergash and Canavino come up quickly and fill the uh, empty space. Looked like Leister went the wrong way. You see there's no blocking at all. Thompson comes in there free of charge if you will. Leister puts a good move on him. That's part of that running ability. He's a good scrambler but there are just too many people linebackers coming in there and Leister cannot get any good yardage. He got three. It's third and seven. The Michigan defense scrambles around. Tony Ellis moves in the backfield. He's the fullback for Michigan State. Steve Smith the running back. Leister on a third and seven, drops straight back, lobs one deep, got his man, Otis Grant, out of bounds in Michigan territory. That's a Spartan first down. Two number nines going side by side, Otis Grant for State, Brian Carpenter for Michigan. Grant comes up a winner on a very well-thrown ball. Very well-thrown ball, and he picked it out on a good coverage. They were in single coverage, and they were uptight thinking that they would try to run it. And he just ran right by Brian Carpenter. And Grant makes a good reception over the shoulder. Gets knocked out of bounds by Carpenter. Michigan State first down. 32 yards on the play. First down at the Michigan 45-yard line. Straight ahead for Tony Ellis. And he gets perhaps three. Stacked up on the Michigan defense. We talked before the game about Michigan State's kicking game. Now that Michigan State is inside Michigan territory, you see now, because they have Morton Anderson, they're capable of scoring from in here if they get a couple more first downs. Second and six, Daryl Turner, the freshman from Flint Southwestern, splits out to the right. He's number 38. Give it to Smith. Smith finds very little running room, but gets across the 40, maybe three. 
Buddy Waters, uh, head coach at Michigan State after great years as a small college coach in Michigan. He was at Hillsdale and Saginaw Valley. He scored a touchdown against Michigan when he played. Of course, the final score was 55 to 7. <laughs> Favor Michigan. Better put that in so you know, huh? Third down and about three. <laughs> no, probably not. Leister straight back to throw. It's a little time. Runs out of the hole. Thompson is after him, but Leister dives ahead and is very close to the first down. They'll have to measure. Boy, he stretched out and tried to reach past the strike. Don't know that he got all of it, though. The best pass defense is a good rush. Michigan not blitzing on this play. They're rushing with four people. Three down linemen and the linebacker, Robert Thompson. And look at this Robert Thompson effort, number 99. He gets blocked. He's out of the play. He sees Leister scramble. And then he uses just great speed to get in there and make the hit. He's coming from the back side of the play. Well, uh, where he reached is good enough. But when they marked it back, it was still good enough. First down, Michigan State. That's their second of the day. A minute 51 left in this first quarter. It's a 10-0 gain favor Michigan. A field goal by Sheet. Turnover interception. The Canavino bump up in the air to Marion Body. And then a one-yard touchdown run by Lawrence Ricks. Steve Smith is split way out to the left. All the way across the field. Carpenter comes across to cover him. Andy Schramm is the lone back behind Leister. Meister. Looking to throw down the middle. Knock down. Andy Canavino got a hand on that one. Intended for Ted Jones, who was open. They had Steve Smith's, but as you said, Larry, way wide left, okay? Now, he was the primary receiver, but Michigan doubled up. So, Leister had to go to a secondary receiver, and Canavino is getting a great job looking around him. Great drop, rather. Looks around him to see where the receiver is, and then keeps an eye on Leister. And just gets in the middle of the play and breaks it up. Second and 10. Michigan 35-yard line. Leister looking to throw or run. Whatever he can find. A little room to run. Good balance. Got in a couple extra yards by putting that hand down to keep him up before Cedric Coles tripped him. Coming into this game, Leister had 18 carries for 52 yards. And most throwing quarterbacks you'll see on their rushing yardage have negative yards. That's why Leister provides such a really diversified attack in the sense that he is a running quarterback. He can hurt you with the run. They get inside the defensive end, Johnson, and then uh, Leister just shows great balance in getting as much yardage as he can. Third down and two. Leister moving his men around. Somebody's out of position. The clock is going against him now, but they get the snap off. Steve Smith gets the first down around left end. Thrown out of bounds at the 20, and a flag is thrown back about the 28-yard line. On the tackle, Marion Body. Flipping the call against Michigan State. The Spartan drive, it was going to be first and 10 at about the 20 yard line. Watch 53, Mel Owens here. Now there's 59 throwing a block in the back of his legs. That's the clip. They had the first down, and that was the mistake, and it's going to cost them dearly. You just can't afford to make that kind of mistake when you're down deep in enemy territory. Now it's back to the 43-yard line of Michigan. Third down and 18. Otis Grant checks out. John Leister explaining to the Spartans what has to be done, and they know. Long way to go and only two downs to do it in. Steve Smith again split wide right this time. Screen pass. They get away. Tony Ellis got some room. Cracks up near the 30-yard line before he is tackled. That's not enough for the first down. That'll only make it fourth and nine. And you can think field goal now or go, go for the first down. That's the end zone picture that Morton Anderson sees, although he ain't going to look at that. He's going to stare right at the ball. Leister is the holder. Kick is up, long enough, and good. 
Horton Anderson hits from 49 yards out, and Michigan State has scored three points. Michigan still leads, however, 10-3. seconds remain in the first quarter, and the clock won't start till they snap the ball, so Michigan will have to run at least one more play in this quarter. First and ten at the 22, Wangler with Edwards and Ricks behind him. Ricks it is. Runs right into Johnny Lee Haynes. Bounces off for maybe a yard, and that's all as the first quarter ends with Michigan on top of Michigan State, 10-3. Michigan was unable to move the football, so we pick up the action later in the quarter. Leister on the first and 10. Rolls. Throws one deep. His man is open. Got it. Jones. Fumble ball, but no, it's, it's going to be a catch and a first down deep in Michigan's territory. Ted Jones got behind his man. The defense paused when Leister started to run. Thought they had to come up and make a tackle. And Leister let it loose. Well, Leister waved him downfield. And I think the defensive secondary just kind of let up a second and let Jones get behind him. Now, the question is, when he makes the catch, he is hit and fumbles. Now, watch it. There he is, he's got possession. They rule he was down and the ball was not fumbled. And it looked to me like it was a fumble. I'll agree with you, Jim. First down, Grant fumbles. And Michigan covers that ball. What do you call that, turnabout fair play or something? Uh, you, you thought the fumble came on the pass reception and Michigan had gotten it. And Michigan State gets the big break, and then they come back and let it lay on the ground, and Michigan gets it for their big break. Tried to run their flanker, who was a quarterback, Otis Grant, a year ago. And he, no, make that Ellis, it's the fullback. And Canavino is the guy that causes the fumble. Andy Canavino causing two turnovers today, one knocking that pass up for the interception and causing that fumble there. First and 10, Michigan at their own 18-yard line. A great chance for Michigan State gone by way of the fumble of Tony Ellis. Gerald Ingram gets the call. McAdoo in the middle of the pile, straightening that one up, and it just gets to the 20, a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. Once again, let's notice the wide side of the field with Anthony Carter. As we look at Jim Beckler on the sidelines, he's in a 10-3 ball game right now in the third, second quarter. They are doubling up on Anthony Carter. They hit one pass on him in single coverage. They've decided, well, maybe we ought to keep two on Anthony. Second and eight. Wangler delivers the ball. First down, Anthony Carter makes the catch as Mike Marshall makes the hit. But that was a beautiful pass. They're trying to disguise the coverage. They start with two men out there. Looks like they're doubling on him, and then that guy comes in to cover the run. Anthony is single covered. He runs a quick post pattern. And Mike Marshall has got all he can handle to cover Anthony Carter one on one. And L Wangler just lays the ball in beautifully, and Anthony makes the catch. First and ten. And the give is to Wolfo. And Wolfo gets some yardage before he is tripped by Smiley Cresswell, number 91. That is close to the first down. He got nine on the play, second and one. I think you should credit Mike Marshall for the coverage on that Carter pass, though. He was right there, stride for stride, but the ball was thrown so well and right on the number one that there was no chance to do anything with it. There was no underneath coverage, and that's what allowed Anthony to get in front of him. He shields uh, Marshall with his body and makes the catch. Second and one. Wangler going for more than a first down. Too far and out of bounds. Incomplete. Third down and one. That's second and one. A great circumstance, especially out near midfield. Michigan at their own 42. Alan Mitchell was trying to get deep. Alan Mitchell just actually stopped on the pattern. The ball was thrown up there, and Alan just stopped. It looked like he was hit by a defensive back and didn't continue the pattern. Van Williams was the man on the coverage. Edwards puts Wolfolk on the high backs behind Wangler. 
on this third and one. Wolfolk it is. Good pull by Wolfolk. He runs into the official. It's more the official than anything else that time. Although there were Spartan tacklers nearby, Butch might have been off to the races had he not hit the official. He gets between those two people, 93 and Bernard Hay. That was Bernard Hay. If he gets between Hay and the safety, there's nobody back there to stop him. The official brings him down and credit him with one solo tackle. First and 10, Michigan at the Michigan State 48-yard line. It's Edwards straight ahead. He gets down to about the 45-yard line. Wrapped up by James Neely, the middle linebacker who had such an outstanding game against Notre Dame. Maybe inspired because Neely is from South Bend, Indiana. Second down and seven for Michigan. Eleven minutes remain in the half. Michigan on top by seven, 10-3. Anthony Carter goes wide to the right. Alan Mitchell is split to the left. Wolfolk and Edwards behind Wangler, Michigan State's linebacker. Bailey dropping in and out of it. Wolfolk tries the right side. Makes his own running room before he's hauled down by Joe Stevens, 83. Joe Stevens, the tight no. Good effort by Butch when there wasn't much room to run. Again, Michigan State gambling defensively. You'll watch. Uh, Powers on this, uh, the trap play coming out. Tries to kick the end out, but there are two people on the outside, so it allows Butch only one place to go. That's inside. He ducks his head and runs underneath the block of Norm Betts and really makes good yardage on a play that wasn't there. Third down, two yards to go. Wolfolk again, looking for an opening. Very little. Again, Joe Stevens, one of the tacklers. Van Williams, 32, is up there. But the man on the bottom was Joe Stevens. Fourth down and a yard. He didn't quite make the first down. But certainly you can gamble at this kind of field position. Michigan State's head coach, Buddy Waters, one victory on the season, three losses. Two tight ends now, bunched in tight, and only Mitchell split left. And Wolfolk goes straight ahead. He got, I think, enough for the first down. They were pulling on him, trying to get him back, but the line made enough room, I think, for Butch to get the first down. I think that's also the toughest we've seen Butch run straight ahead into a pile. Butch usually gets to the line of scrimmage and will dance a little bit, look for the hole to try to get the big one. But at that time, he just took a dive in there and said, we're getting the first down. Credit John Powers back in there again. Didn't make it. Michigan State held. A good charge by the Spartan defensive line, and they held. It is a good charge. Butch just running straight ahead. He gets hit around by the feet, and they push him back. Smiley Creswell is the guy that hits him around the ankles and makes him fall forward, and Butch just didn't get the half yard he needed to get the first down, and Michigan State comes up with a big defensive play that could jack everybody up. Let's pick up the action later in the quarter with Michigan State in possession. Second and 10, still at the 16. 5.25 left to play in the half. Otis Grant goes wide to the left. Weister back to throw. Over the middle, wide open is Jones. And that's good for about nine down to the Michigan six-yard line. Six to seven. Ted Jones, the sophomore receiver from Akron, Ohio, was wide open. They caught Michigan in the blitz. Watch Andy Canavino. He gets over the block of Steve Smith, but that gives Leister time enough to get the receiver, and he is wide open underneath the deep coverage. Good game for nine. Michigan State in business, third and one on the Michigan six. That was Tony Jackson on the tackle. Otis Grant split to the wide side. Leister tries a quarterback sneak for that first down, and I don't know. He slipped when he started to move ahead. 
have to see where they mark it. Unpiling, that is Jeff Shaw on the bottom, a promising freshman defensive lineman from Matawan, New Jersey. 6'2", 250 pounds. Say he was 270 when he came to school, and some of that was youthful fat. <laughs> I'm sure Bo had a few things to say and had him looking at him very closely at the training table. No I potatoes. Didn't make the first down. It is fourth down and less than a yard. And Michigan State will go for it, and it fits the mold of Muddy Waters in the last week against Notre Dame. Twice he went for two-point conversions in a tight game like this. He is going all out for the victory. I think in his first year he feels he's got to do that with his young team, and Michigan State I don't think will uh, kick it off for field goals or things like this when they've got a chance to get in for six. Fourth down and one. A bigger play than the third down play they converted. And they're going to go for it all. Weister rolling. Cuts inside. He's got the first down. He got the touchdown. He survived the hit at the three-yard line and got six. You don't see a quarterback take a hit like that and keep going. This kid, John Leister, has really lit up the Spartans. This is a rollout. I don't believe he was looking to throw at all. I think he was. this was a fake. He was going to run all the way. Now watch the hit at about the three. That's Mel Owens, and he just holds on. Now his knee was down, but the referee ruled that he was still uh, going, and then they let him go. Now watch the knee. I think this was just a, a fake for Michigan's uh, for Michigan's benefit on the pass, and he was looking to run all the way. Here comes Owens. Now watch the left knee. Is it down? It was down, but the referee ruled that he got in. Martin Anderson has just converted. John Leister leads the Spartans back, and with 4-12 remaining in the half, it's all tied up at 10. Any given Saturday, anything can happen. Uh, Michigan, Michigan State, draw out the record. Draw out the record. Yeah. You know, we get a lot of heat because that's a cliche, but in this game, it's not a cliche. It's a fact. It really is. On paper, Michigan is much the stronger team. On the scoreboard, it's equal. First and ten. Throw is for Bush Wolfolk and complete. George Cooper, the linebacker, one of two there to wrap up Wolfolk after a game. The other one is 58, James Neely. Give him four on the play. Second and six. Michigan going with a little screen. Actually, there's no blocker out there, but they're double covering the wide receivers. So that leaves the back out of the backfield open. Butch makes a good move to get inside Cooper and get four, because Cooper probably would have nailed him for about a one-yard gain had he not made the move. Second and six. Wolfolk takes a pitch. Runs straight on into 39. George Cooper again. He didn't get the first down, and what a collision that was. I'll tell you what, George Cooper is a for real player. He had laid some wood here to Wolfhug. It looks like a good play. Here's Cooper. Butch is going full speed, and he has stopped dead. No yardage after the hit at all. That's just a great play. Seen Cooper. A couple of nice hits from that young man. Yeah, Cooper had a back injury early in his career that hurt his playing time, but boy, he's making up for it here today. Third down and two. Michigan at their own 28-yard line. Edwards, the deep back in this setup. Wangler to throw, however, on third and two. He's got running room on this side, but runs into his own man, Ed Moransky. Should be the first down, however, as he's at just at the 30-yard line, and that's all they needed. Let's take a look at Anthony Carter. They're doubling him up. That's the first guy. Now you see Carter or Wangler scrambling. Now Anthony's wide open after he gets by the first one. He running into the secondary coverage though, and I think Wangler saw him behind him and chose rather to keep the ball, and he did get the first down. I believe that's John Wangler's first yardage positive in, in this season. 2.20 left in the half. First and 10 at the Michigan 30-yard line. Stanley Edwards is met at the line of scrimmage. He gets a very hard two yards. Smiley Cresswell and Terry Bailey, linebacker from California, a junior college transfer who was their top linebacker. An injury has had him out most of this year. It's his first action now. 
Michigan not getting the good blocks up front from their line. The holes are there, but they're closing too quickly. They must sustain those blocks up front. And you were ready to write this one off at 10-0. I didn't say anything about writing it off. I saw that smile. Langler in trouble. Gets it away. Complete Dunaway. Dunaway down the sideline with a blocker in front. Mike Marshall pushes him out at the 12-yard line. What a big play. John Langler is almost sacked. And then he gets the pass away to Craig Dunaway. The fact is, the Wangler is almost sacked, and credit John with having a cool head. He knows his receiver's there, and he gets it up and throws a perfect pass in a real hurry. The tight end beat two people, and he has got clear sailing. Anthony Carter throws a block on Marshall that gets Dunaway probably another five or seven yards. You see Anthony from his wide receiver spot coming over to throw the block. Now, if he knocks him down, it's a touchdown. But he tied him up enough to give Dunaway about an extra five or seven yards, a 55-yard play for the Wolverines. First and 10, Michigan, at the Michigan State 13-yard line. Big play game. Wangler to Wolfolk. Cuts back, runs into James Neely, the linebacker, after only a yard or two. It'll be second down and eight. A minute 20 left in the half. Michigan threatening to push in for six more, but certainly in great position for three. 11-yard line of Michigan State, second down and eight. Wolfolk and Edwards behind Wangler. Wangler throwing for Carter. No good. Out of bounds as Anthony goes all the way into the stands. But he's all right. I'll tell you, one of the greatest athletic things I've ever seen Anthony Carter do was jump over the band to keep from getting hurt. They're singling on Anthony outside. Same pattern they ran on the first touchdown to Anthony. Runs the flag. Wangler put it outside and high. Now watch the feet. Are they in? Reception's made. One foot's in. That's hard to tell. Looks like he caught it, but now watch this. This is just a great athletic. Oh, we missed it, but he jumps over the chairs and almost gets into the third row. Jim, I got to agree with you. It looked like he had a foot in. Third and nine. Maybe he didn't have possession of the ball at that point. But that was blocked from us. Third and nine. Wanger again throws. Knocked down. Great defensive play. Is that Cooper? No, it's 32. Van Williams. I thought George Cooper had gotten back and done something else. Van Williams, a junior defensive back, makes a big knockdown, and it's fourth down and nine, and Michigan's going to go for three. Here's Anthony Carter again, and it looks like he's open. He's got the guy beat, but he was probably secondary receiver. And then Anthony plays defense here. He sees that a defender has his hands on the ball, and he tries to get a hold of it. Sheik will try to put Michigan ahead. 19-yard line is the spot. 29 would be the field goal distance. It's up, and it's good. And Sheik hits on his second field goal of the afternoon. Michigan goes back in front of Michigan State, 13 to 10. Sheik is set to kick off for the Wolverines. Otis Grant is deep for the Spartans, and that kick will sail into the end zone. No, it bounces at the one-yard line and bounces through the end zone, so the same result. First and 10, Michigan State at their own 20-yard line. 46 seconds left in the half. plays to go from the 20-yard line. Didn't go the entire 80, but get the 29-yard field goal, and Michigan is on top, and Leister will try to cut back into it. Screen pass, complete to Ellis. Gets a block for 30, 35, and out of bounds at the 40 goes fullback Tony Ellis from Coolidge, Arizona. This sophomore is a good-looking back. Very good-looking back, and I think good play selection by the Spartans in Muddy Waters, and that they're going, they know Michigan's going to be looking deep, so they come with a little screen underneath. Everybody deep is covered, and this is just a little safety valve. Now, the rest is up to Ellis. He gets one block there on Bostic, and Ellis then makes the play upfield. Now, this is the value of having Morton Anderson with you, too, is that if you get inside to the Michigan territory, you're in scoring position with him. First down, open man, Ted Jones. 
complete and out of bounds at the Michigan 40-yard line. Two quick passes have used only 13 seconds off the clock, and Michigan State is in Michigan territory. Jim, this doesn't look any different than the Darrell Rogers teams of the last couple of years for East Lansing. Not at all. They're using the pass offense very efficiently, mixing it up a little bit with the run, but here in the late going of the first half, Michigan is covering deep, and the Michigan State Spartans are just finding the holes with their receivers. That is Ted Jones out of Akron, Ohio, a sophomore receiver who's given the Spartans another first down. Leister slips, but writes himself and throws deep. Out of bounds, coverage by Brian Carpenter on Otis Grant. Again, the nines are stride for stride down near the four-yard line. Second and ten. Otis Grant came into the fall as a quarterback prospect, Larry, and has moved out to the wide receiver spot and done very well. Three catches for 62 yards this year coming into this ballgame. Is that just to keep him honest, pass? It's I, tough to go for the whole thing, but uh, you just want to remind him that you can so you can complete another short one and have a shot at a field goal. I think in a situation like this, though, that kind of pass is, you know, wise. Second and ten. Over the middle, Steve Smith takes the hit from Canavino, stays on his feet, but gets no yardage. It's right back to the 40, and they have to call timeout because the clock is ticking with 16 seconds to go. Injured on the play, one Michigan player. Canavino makes a very big hit on Steve Smith. Credit Steve Smith for holding on to the ball. It shows great balance in, in staying up. And then Canavino just holding on for dear life till Owens gets there to help him out. Third down and 10. 40-yard line of Michigan. 16 seconds left in the half. Leister has some time. Over the middle. Incomplete. Almost intercepted by Marion Body. Too many blue jerseys around that one. At this point in time, I'm thinking that's kind of a tough pass to throw in this situation. You're throwing down the middle into the teeth of the Michigan coverage. And you see three Wolverines get their hands on it. Canavino almost had it, and I think Carpenter would have had it had Body not touched it. The wind is in his face, but Morton Anderson is going to attempt a field goal from the 47-yard line. 57 yards on the kick. Harry Oliver, I would believe. the bar into the wind incredible five seconds left on the clock and Michigan State has tied Michigan 13-13 Spartans shuffle around looks like they'll go for the short kick and be sure they run out the clock and not give Carter a chance to do anything ball is under a pile up at the 34 yard line they didn't run out the clock three seconds to go did we say something like on any given saturday anything can happen when Morton anderson hits a 57 yarder to tie it up michigan state i think with that kick we'll have the momentum going in at halftime three seconds left unless michigan can pull out a miracle uh touchdown or anything here with just three seconds left in the half Schembechler's got to be talking to himself. You know, there's only one field goal attempt by a Michigan opponent this year that has not been good. <laughs> well, this should be the last play. I don't think you can get two plays in three seconds from Wangler. And I imagine you'd look for Carter. John is back. He looks for Carter. In and out of his hands, and the clock runs out. It's halftime in Ann Arbor with the score. Michigan 13, Michigan State 13. 30 minutes have gone by on the scoreboard, Jim, and the scoreboard looks the same as it did when this game started. No blood between you and I. We got a 30-minute football game now as they're tied at halftime 13 apiece. Incredible, really. Michigan State, the underdog coming into this game and playing very well on uh, George Cooper defensively and John Leister offensively. It's an amazing fact, the fact that Michigan State has been the underdog in some circles by 17 points, and yet you look at the statistics for the first half, and you're looking at an even football game, just like you are as far as the uh, scoreboard goes. Michigan, of course, has got the big one long pass play for 55 yards, but total offense really 
pretty much the same. 229, 185, no much difference there. The turnovers, Michigan State, too. Michigan has not capitalized on those, and I think that's the key. Michigan must capitalize on the Spartans' uh, mistakes in order to get back in a ballgame. Very much so, and there was a mistake that set up one of the Michigan touchdowns. An interception, a quick pass to Anthony Carter, and from there it was easy. Lawrence Ricks goes over here, and Michigan at this point is looking good, and they're way ahead, but... The Spartans came back on a controversial touchdown. John Leister, who has had a great half scrambling the football, and here he scrambles for a touchdown. It's a rollout, looking to pass. I don't think he really meant to pass, but watch Mel Owens, number 53, come in here. Now, he'll hit Leister as Leister heads in for the end zone. Leister makes a good cut to get by Canavino here. Now, Owens will put a hit on him, and the left knee will go down and touch. Now, the referee should rule that he is down. But he did not rule he was down, and Leister got back up and got into the end zone, and Michigan State right back in the ballgame. Then, of course, the big one that gave them the tie with just five seconds remaining, Morton Anderson hit a 57-yard field goal to tie it up at 13. It just gets over the bar, and we are at him in a brand-new football game here, tied up 13-13 at halftime. Morton Anderson proving that what Bo Schembechler feared coming into the game, that their kicking game Michigan could not match up with, and he's right, as Anderson has given him the tie. Michigan State to kick off to start the second half. Anthony Carter, Stanley Edwards go deep for Michigan as usual. 73rd game in a series that began in 1898, and this one proving you can throw out the record books when they play each other. Michigan against Michigan State, as much fun as you could ask for on a Saturday afternoon. Morton Anderson's kick is high and deep in the end zone, in fact, right through. After an exchange of punts, we pick up the action later in the quarter. 20-yard line of Michigan State, second down Michigan. Five to go for a first down. Stanley Edwards right back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. McAdoo holding up the block. There was no opening. Terry Bailey was able to wrap Edwards from behind then and haul him down. It'll be third down and five. And wouldn't you know, once you talk about the offensive line going throwing good blocks, the next play they have trouble. Dunaway comes in. Chuck Christian comes out at tight end for Michigan. Dunaway carrying the play. And it sends Anthony Carter out wide left. Otherwise, two tight ends. Two setbacks behind Wangler. Throwing play. Incomplete for Edwards. A little bit behind him. Stanley got a hand on it. George Cooper was there in a hurry, as was Mike Marshall. But Stanley just didn't hang on. Had Stanley caught it, I don't believe he would have gotten the first down anyway because there was good coverage. Straight, straight flood pattern Stanley comes right out into the flat they're reading it very well in the secondary you see there's linebacker Cooper and Marshall both over there had he made the catch I doubt very seriously whether he would have made the first down field goal attempt for Haji Sheik 26 yard line a 36 yard kick if he can make it Sheik has made a pair already today and that's easily far enough and good enough and Michigan a penalty flag is down Against Michigan State, it appears. Oh, uh, he's calling Michigan back. We'll see what happens. The field goal is good. But your options might increase. Personal foul on the kicker. Do we have a picture of that? Here is Sheik's kick. Morris dives through and runs into Sheik. Uh, that's a tough call, Jim. He was in the air and could not stop. That Roughing the kicker penalty against the Spartans has may cost them dearly unless they can come up with a big defensive series now. Look out. Anthony Carter's got single coverage to this side with Thomas Morris. 27. Looks like the Spartans are going to come on this play. Wolfolk jumps back. He gets down near the five-yard line. John McCormick. Linebacker among the tacklers, along with Johnny Lee Haynes and Howard McAdoo. But it's a gain of four. Second and goal from the five. Alan Mitchell comes in. Anthony Carter comes out. Mitchell has the play from Bo Schembechler. Five minutes left, third quarter of a 13-13 tie. Mitchell is split wide left. On this second down play. Wolfolk looking straight ahead. 
gets a yard, maybe two to the three, just diving over. Smiley Cresswell, a defensive end, stacked it up. And Butch could do nothing but dive over the pile. Third down from the three. A drive that started back at the Michigan 32-yard line. The Wolverines are marching well. It had apparently stalled on a fourth down, and they went for the field goal, got the penalty, gave him back a first down, and this is third down. Pitch for Anthony Carter in the corner. He got him. Touchdown. John Wangler, beautifully thrown pass. Very simple pass, too, and the fact that there was only one receiver on the play, Anthony Carter. He is single covered, as we talked about before. Wangler takes a step back. Anthony just runs for the corner. Now, nobody's going to catch him. Beautiful thrown ball. Nice catch. Now, watch from the, the ground level. Wangler just steps back and throws it up. Carter was, they took the inside away from Anthony, so he runs right to the corner. With his speed, I don't think anybody's going to cover him one-on-one. -on -one. Michigan gets on the board with a big six points. Sheik will try for seven. Rich Hewlett will hold. Woo! Kick is good. With 4-11 left in the third quarter, Michigan has taken another lead over State, 20-13. On the next series of downs, Michigan State was forced to punt, so we move ahead to action later in the quarter. Now at the 17-yard line of the Wolverines, first down. Carter is out to the top of your screen. And Wangler is looking for it. And Barry, John is sacked as Michigan State pours up the middle and comes up with a very big defensive play. James Neely, the middle linebacker, 58. They have the blitz on, and it's a big gamble for the Michigan State defense on first down. Wolfhawk picks up one blitz of the middle guard not very well. Wangler has no time. He decides, I think, wisely to hold on to the football because if he'd have thrown it out there, when you're down that close, somebody picks it off, it's six. Terry Bailey was also there, but Neely made the actual tackle, and that was a big one. A loss of 10 on the play at second down and 20, and in four field position, the Michigan eight-yard line. Wolfo in trouble, and he goes down at about the six-yard line. Fired up Michigan State defense. Johnny Lee Haynes got through, broke down the blocking, and grabbed Wolf Oak around the ankles. Third down and 21. At the Michigan six-yard line. Muddy doesn't seem too happy about that. Of course, he's thinking about the scoreboard more than anything else. And that's the end of the third quarter of play with a scoreboard reading Michigan 20, Michigan State 13. Third down and 21 yards to go for Michigan from their own six-yard line. A very big call from the bench on this play. Very big. You go to the pass or you go to the run, boy, you know, it's a can't-win situation almost. Unless, of course, you hit one big. The official is slowing down the start of things. Anthony Carter is well out to the top of your screen in the bottom corner. That's Alan Mitchell, number 30. And it's Wangler back to throw out of his own end zone. Carter fell down. Interception, Michigan State out of bounds at the 22-23 yard line. Senior Carl Williams from Royal Oak Shrine. And he and Wangler had to be teammates at Shrine High School. And actually, when Anthony Carter fell down, that's when the play was broken down and Wangler's pass was uh, not his fault at this point. Well, uh, he got a big rush and that forced him to throw it early and throw it up high, but you see Anthony had fallen down, and that left it open. Williams makes to try to make the cut to get upfield, slips on the wet turf, and the Spartans are in business. Big break, first and 10, Michigan 22-yard line for Michigan State. Ellis and Smith, the running backs behind Leister, and Ellis jumps over a couple, gets to the 20-yard line. Mel Owens helping to stack it up with Jeff Shaw and Andy Canavino. With Morton Anderson on the Michigan State squad, you're almost a short three here. Gain of two, second and eight. Oh. 
second down play. The interception has given Michigan State a break. Got to capitalize. Leister runs an option, but doesn't get past Robert Thompson. Didn't fool anybody. Leaned forward for another yard and a half. They get third down and seven. They run it into the short side of the field, which takes away some of the field they can know. Robert Thompson plays it very well. Leister has to block Thompson with the pitch. Now, Thompson was playing kind of in between, waiting to see what happened. When Leister turned it upfield, Thompson came back to make the hit. That's just a good play by Robert Thompson. Well, two downs have gained them only four yards. Leister going to look to see if he can get the other six. Knocked down at the five-yard line. Excellent defensive play. Otis Grant is complaining that perhaps he was interfered with. The official says no. And the save is made by Lott. Watch the play by Lott. He'll be right in front of you now. He's covering him well. The ball is thrown. Now watch. He'll just put his left hand in front and knock it away. Now that is not interference. That is an excellent defensive play on a big third down. John Lott, who is not usually in the lineup, but is an extra defensive back. Sophomore really made a big play. 20, 35 yard field goal attempt by Morton Anderson. He's got it. As you said, Jim, almost automatic from this deep and the turnover results in three points for Michigan State and a 20 to 16 game Michigan on top by four. Langler into the huddle with a play from the sideline that will start from the 20 yard line. First down. Edwards is his fullback. Butch Wolfolk the tailback. Brockington is split left, and Anthony Carter is the flanker out to the right. Langler's pitch to Wolfolk. Hey, can't reach him. Wolfolk gets a couple, maybe three, before he's forced out of bounds. Second down and seven. Big splotch of blood on the pants of John Wangler. Now, whether that's John's blood or someone <laughs> else's, we're not sure. Maybe John has a boo-boo. This is the kind of game this is, as we have said over and over. And you can call it cliche if you want, but today should prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that these games are settled each year on the field. Throw out the records. Second down. Edwards through the middle. There's an opening. Stanley Edwards. Hauled down by Carl Williams. But not before Stanley had broken through to near midfield, the Michigan 49-yard line. That's the kind of thing that can happen when you gamble on defense. They're coming with a blitz. The linebackers are blocked. Stanley gets into the secondary, gets by one deep back. Now he's off to the races and brought back. You'll watch in the interior line, Bernard Hay gets blocked by George Lilja, Michigan's All-American center. They trap with Becker. There's the hole. They were gambling on the outside with the linebackers, and Stanley's in there. Wouldn't you call that holding, Jim? In the interior line? Never. First and 10, Michigan at the 49, a 25-yard burst for Stanley Edwards. Now Michigan with good field position, which Wolfolk is tripped up by Johnny Mor Tommy Morris. But he gets into Michigan State territory at the 48. Another play that could have broken big because there was a crease there. If Wolfolk had been able to keep his feet and get by Morris, there was nobody back in the secondary. The Michigan State team is gambling with their defensive linebackers and their secondary men, bringing them up real close to the line of scrimmage. Second and seven. Carter is out left, top of your screen. Edwards gets it, breaks through. Across the 40, 30-yard line. Edwards down the sidelines, pushed out by Neely, the linebacker. But it's first down and deep in Michigan State territory as Michigan begins to run the ball with some authority. Once again, they've been doing it all time. Here's the trap. It's the same trap. And there is the little crease. Now he's into the secondary. Now this is just great running. Breaks through a tackle there and then uses a stiff arm to get by Morris, and now he's off to the races. He's on the sideline, steps out of bounds right there. 24-yard gain. Edwards running the ball for Michigan, having another big day after his good game last week against California. 
two carries. You've given Edwards 49 yards in this drive, and it's first and 10 at the Michigan State 24-yard line. Wofo gets the call, slips a tackle, breaks for the outside, gets by Marshall. There's another first down, and finally he is rolled out of bounds on the far side by Morris, but it is at the nine-yard line. Good run, puts Wofolk. It wasn't there inside where it was supposed to be. He took it outside and made it. That's where you get the speed of Butch Wolfolk. He is a world-class printer. He's on the Michigan track team in the wintertime and the summertime. Here he just turns it outside and runs by Mike Marshall. A little stiff arm and he's gone. Now he turns it upfield and actually gets by two guys who had the angle. That's just great speed. First and goal from the nine. Michigan was here once before in the third quarter and did not cash in. This time it's Edwards up to about the six yard line before he is driven back. Neely and McCormick leading the tacklers. Now we're getting close to the goal line. Let's check Anthony Carter out. Well, he's come, no, he's staying in the ball game. But let's check Anthony Carter out. And if they do go to that goal line defense and cover him with single coverage, I think Michigan will be looking for that and come up in a set to give them an idea what Michigan State's going to do to Anthony split wide. And State will try to force him to turn his pass pattern inside, inside. instead of the corner. They are doing it again, single coverage, and Anthony's in motion. Second and seven. Wolfo gets the pitch and gets nailed for a loss of yardage. Great defensive play by Carl Williams, cornerback who came up, fought off the block, and made the tackle. All day long, Michigan State's defense has been gambling. Here they gamble with the cornerback. Michigan cannot pick up the blitz. Butch uh, doesn't get anywhere because Stanley Edwards misses the assignment. He misses the block on the corner. And Butch has nowhere to go. He has hit hard. Michigan State playing tough defensive game today. Third down and eight for Michigan at the Michigan State eight. Langler looks for someone to throw to. Over the middle. Yes. Got it tight in. Dunaway. Touchdown, Michigan. Everybody's looking at Anthony Carter and Alan Mitchell on the outside because that's where they go. And then tight end Craig Dunaway just comes off and kind of sneaks in behind the linebackers. He's wide open in the back of the end zone. Great protection. Give credit to the offensive line for giving Wangle time to stand here. Lots of time. And then he just fires a strike. Nobody around Dunaway at all. And the Wolverines get a big six points. Somebody forgot to tight end. And Craig Dunaway gets a big touchdown. He had a, another big touchdown against Notre Dame earlier this year. Sheik's field extra point is good. And Michigan has taken a 27 to 16 lead over Michigan State with 10.45 to play. So John Leister and the Spartans have to come up with something that will get them quickly down the field and leave some time to score twice. Otis Grant comes out to the left. Smith moves over to the flanker spot. That's Ted Jones, who is split out to the right, and Tony Ellis, the lone setback. He gets the call and gets maybe a yard. Jeff Shaw and Mike Turgovac stacking the play up. But no running room for Tony Ellis. The Spartans are going about it patiently, I would Jeff say, with 11 points down with 10-24 left. Now, that's not much time to go 80 yards. Two minutes and 45 seconds. But those two long runs by Stanley Edwards ate up 49 of the 80 yards. And I'm sure Bo will take that. You won't find a coach that won't. No. Second and eight. Leister. Over the middle. Open man. Bruce Reeves, if he can turn it up, he's got the first down. 40, 45-yard line before Reeves is ridden out of bounds by Andy Canavino. No, make that number 44, not 41. Lott. John Lott, the sophomore from Ohio, who had been an extra defensive back we saw, but now getting considerably more playing time. First down, Michigan State. On the good run by Bruce Reeves after the completion from Leister. At the state, 46-yard line. Quick pass to the sideline. Jones with a great catch. 
Ted Jones one-handed that one right out of the air and was knocked out of bounds, but it's a first down for State. There is no question this is a great catch, and that really is what makes the play. Very simple pattern. He just runs right down the sideline. Leister throws it up, and I'll tell you what, you won't see a better catch than that anywhere. One hand, brought it in, stayed inbounds. What I like about that youngster is he makes good catches, but he, as soon as they hit him, he does not cough up the football. He could have dropped that ball very well. One-handed catch, took a solid hit, stayed with it. First and 10 at the Michigan 39-yard line. Michigan State on the move. Steve Smith trying the left side. He cuts back and gets inside the 35 to about the 33. Gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Michigan State on a real good drive, mixing it up well, getting good passes, and here they just cave in the outside and throw them to the sideline. Smith cuts it back up inside for a good gain of six yards. Michigan State's not out of this one by any stretch of the imagination. 27-16 is not an, an unovercomable lead. You figure that out. 9-18 <laughs> left to play. 27-16 the score. On second down, passes behind Ellison incomplete. Oh, he was clear and had room to the sideline to at least get the first down. But that pass was behind him, and not even Ted Jones could have caught that one. Good rush by Robert Thompson. Forced Leister to throw it a little bit early. Ellis hadn't really completed his pattern yet. Now we got a third down and a very important one for this Spartan drive. They need to put up some points. A field goal will do, but of course the touchdown will be considerably better. 50% completion average for Leister. He hits a big one to Jones again. First down at the Michigan 24-yard line. Marion Body made the tackle. Marion Body spun into the ground, but Ted Jones, the sophomore from Akron, Ohio, comes through with a big third down play. He's not particularly fast. Jones isn't, but he's got great hands, and he runs great routes. This is a great route. Single coverage. He just comes across the middle. He knows there's going to be traffic in there. Leister throws it perfectly, and they got another first down. Smith adjusts his position in the backfield. Ellis is the ball carrier. Runs through a couple of tackles to about the 21. Canavino finally brings him down. That's a gain of five, second and five. Now four, make it second and six. Allison Smith, shift. Leister looking for Jones. Wow, to the end zone. Jones almost had it. And you could argue on a call on that one as Marion Body was kind of all over Ted Jones. Very similar to the pass that they threw, uh, that he caught one-handed on the sideline. Just a straight, right down the middle of the field. Now Jones, to get his hands on this ball, does a good job. And as we see on the, on the coverage, there was no interference there. The ball just a little bit out of the reach. Just straight down the field, try to beat him and make the great catch. That's what replays will do for you. My body did not interfere with him. Third down and six to go. Over the middle, he got the first down as Leister found his tight end, Kimichik, for the first time today. The senior from Norway, Michigan, makes a very, very big first down catch. Well, he's wide open. I think the coverage is poor on this play. He comes underneath the linebackers all the way across the field. Great protection allows him to get over there. And in this situation, Kimichik makes a great job just making sure he catches the ball and going down with the first down yardage. Thrown a little bit behind him, but he converted it. Michigan State at the Michigan 12-yard line with a first and 10. Great field position because he got a lot of downs to go for it. Ellis breaks through inside the five to the four. Tony Ellis. Canavino stops him and saves a possible touchdown. The angle down. You see Turgovac starting. He gives everybody a good angle. And there is the hole. Turgovac moving down on the inside shoulder really created a natural hole for Ellis. You'll watch it. There is a big hole, and it's a straight dive play. 
Marv Mantos with a big block that enabled Ellis to break down to the four, where it is second down and two. Michigan State threatening again. Ellis goes in for the touchdown. Michigan State has scored. plays blocked well that, that's the reason he got in uh, it was uh, Dave Weddle uh, the offensive guard number 63 he kicks out the linebacker kicks out the tackle Nicolau Canavino is blocked by Strata and the hole is there wide open Ellis gets through it easily Michigan State will go for one Morton Anderson sure fire he is connected and missed only once on a bad snap from center in the Notre Dame game. He didn't get a chance to convert an extra point. He converts this one. It is Michigan 27, Michigan State 23 with seven minutes to play. Anthony Carter is deep. Stanley Edwards in front of him to receive this kickoff from Morton Anderson. being thoroughly enjoyed in Ann Arbor. The crowd comes to its feet. Kickoff is high, a lot of hang time, falling at about the four, where Carter will get a chance to return it. Looking only to the 20-yard line, he stands up under a real solid hit. By Rick Milheiser, Farmington, number 13. After an exchange of possessions, we pick up the action later in the quarter. A field goal attempt from the 22-yard line or an apparent field goal attempt. A 32-yarder, if good. Hewlett does not. He's rolling out. Hewlett on the option. Being chased and knocked out of bounds. He was chased out by George Cooper and 57 Steve Blank on the far side as Bo chose to gamble with the fake field goal and it didn't work. I wonder why you don't run the play rather than this. Here's the fake. Michigan State obviously, I think, aware that the Wolverines did run a fake against, who was it, Notre Dame, I believe. Northwestern. They're Northwestern. And uh, it's just. It's first and 10. Yeah, Michigan that's what State it is. at their 19 yard line. Leister in trouble. Turgovac. He gets it away and almost completes it as Turgovac was hauling Leister down at the seven-yard line. He's got, a, he's got a strong arm, doesn't he? Kimichek, the tight end, if he could have made that catch off his uh, shoelaces, would have spoiled Turgovac's great effort. Instead, it's second down and ten. I go back to the fake field goal now. Wouldn't you, I don't know, I, wouldn't you rather run it fourth and two rather than try the fake field goal? I don't want a second guess from up here. <laughs> Second down and 10. Leister on the rollout. Incomplete. Oh, he hit Steve Smith right on the money and it didn't stay. A minute 25 left on the clock. But two downs all in Michigan State has left to play with. Unless they can get 10 yards. I won't second guess anymore. You can. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Sit in your living room. Sit in the stands. Not many folks leaving the stands, by the way, as this one worth the price of admission and then some. Living up to the reputation of Michigan, Michigan State. Third down and 10, big play for the Spartans if they are to have any chance at all. Leister has some time. Incomplete, intercepted Andy Canavino. Getting a tip from Nicolau. No, no, 94. James Herman. And there's a big play that should turn it in Michigan's favor as James Herman tips that pass and Andy Canavino makes the interception. A game try by Michigan State. This young man, John Leister from Great Falls, Montana, is an excellent quarterback. There are a lot of other talented athletes for the Spartans, but they are going to suffer another close loss. Real tough loss for Michigan State because this is the second week in a row they've gotten up emotionally for a football game last week against Notre Dame and then this week against Michigan. And it's a tough loss for Michigan State, but I'll tell you, they've proved that they are a good football team, and I think they'll be a factor in the Big Ten race. Congratulations, Jim. 
you won it today. <laughs> Be sure to join us next week as the Michigan Wolverines travel to Minneapolis to take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Once again, the final score here today, Michigan 27, Michigan State 23. The executive producer of On TV Sports is Rocky Flitterman. Today's game was produced by Chuck Wozniak. Our assistant director, Bob Whitelaw. Our associate producer, John Tuey. Stage manager, Michael Smith. This has been a sports presentation of National Subscription Television. For the score, that's Eddie Payton awaiting the kickoff from Eddie Murray. They get 20 on that play. First and 10 at the 29. Wolfo hangs on to the ball, just barely gets to the 30. No running room at all. Anthony Carter is the guy that Carolina is very concerned about as we take a look at the first down pass. He runs straight down the field. They're giving him plenty of cushion because they know what a threat he is deep. Then Anthony just cuts it outside, comes back toward the ball, makes the good catch, inbounds. Michigan makes the big play on the first down with Anthony Carter getting a big reception. Second and eight, Michigan. The couple in a punting situation for State. Cedric Cole stops the play right off. They don't get the trap block from the guard, number 69, Rod Strata. And Cedric Coles is in there just a little bit too early. And now we get into the punting situation. Stakowitz, the great Michigan State punter, hitting it now. And the wind has shifted. He'll be going with the wind, it appears. Anthony Carter is deep. Just the man Michigan wants to receive a punt. A low punt that should take a good bounce at the Michigan 40-yard line. Not that good. Goes out of bounds. 38, where it is marked. First and 10, Michigan. Very good field position to start from. I think maybe the strategy of Michigan State to receive the football has uh, hurt them in the sense that Stackwitz didn't get the good kickoff, and the Wolverines start with their offense uh, in good field position. The receivers, Betts Mitchell and Anthony Carter, and the offensive backs with John Wangler starting at quarterback today. That'll be the second straight game. Michigan State has chosen to start a couple of seniors in that defensive backfield, notably Mike Marshall out of Detroit Southwestern. And off to Ricks. Big opening. Lawrence Ricks bangs it up near a first down. Carl Williams, a senior, also starting in the defensive backfield for Michigan State. Straight, He's out of Royal Oak Shrine. Straight draw. There's a big hole there. This is one of the problems Michigan State has had in the early going. They are ninth in the Big Ten Conference in rushing defense, giving up an average of 258 yards a game. And I think the Wolverines will try to exploit that early on the ground between the tackles. Second and one for Michigan. There's an illegal procedure as Lilja, the Michigan center, moved the ball. Penalty flags it down, and they are discussing it. Illegal procedure, Michigan State. The only thing I can think of, Larry, is that when Lilger moved the ball, uh, the center has that right to change the ball so he gets the laces where he wants them, where the quarterback wants them. The defensive man saw him move the ball and just thought it was going to be a snap and jumped across the line, and uh, the Frank center has that right. Frankly, it looked like a snap, though. He didn't roll the ball around to get first and 10. Michigan State at their own 20-yard line. Let us point out, Larry, first of all, that the Michigan uh, State Spartans will be working into the wind of the first quarter. They won the toss, elected to receive. The Michigan defense uh, decided we'll kick it off to them and take the win, and I think they might have done that had they won the toss anyway because there is a strong breeze. Offensive line for Michigan State with a few adjustments, so although Jones, Kimichek, and Tony Gilbert are the receivers, John Leister, the sophomore quarterback from Great Falls, Montana, the man who ignited the Spartan offense to some extent last week in the Notre Dame game when they put 21 points up on the board and lost to the Irish 26-21. Long count for Leister as he looks over the Michigan defense and throws to the wing. Steve Smith can't hang on. Incomplete. It's second and ten. Many teams have run on the Michigan defense this year, although judging from play number one, it appears that Muddy Waters plans to try to pass against them. The Michigan defense, linebackers, Andy Canavino. A standout back there. And Marion Body, Carpenter, Jackson, and Reeves, the defensive backs. Second down, 10 from the 20. Little adjustment in the backfield. Pullback is Andy Schramm, and he goes in motion. Pitches to Smith. A little opening. 
Steve Smith gets seven yards to the 27-yard line. Marion Body makes the tackle. Bo Schembechler with a great deal of respect for this back, Steve Smith. Absolutely. Uh, they caved in the linebacker that time. There was a hole on the outside. Smith coming into his final year has over 2,000 yards rushing for the Spartans. He's fifth on their all-time list, and he needs just 446 more yards to be their career leader ahead of uh, the flea, Herrick Allen. Third and three, Michigan State, 27-yard line. Schramm is up close behind Leister. Leister, Leister gives the Smith all down. He is wrapped up, but he fell down, actually. Cedric Coles, 92, on top of him, and that'll turn the... Uh, the down marker around, make it fourth down, loss of... From Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, on TV Sports presents college football action as the Michigan State Spartans take on the Michigan Wolverines. Michigan Football 1980 is brought to you by Bush Beer. Remember, don't just reach for a beer, head for the mountain. Hello again, everyone. Larry Adderley along with Jim Brandstetter for this Michigan football telecast, and this is the one that divides the state. This is the one that divides families. Sometimes families even leave their roots in East Lansing and go to Ann Arbor. An amazing thing that someone would turn on a family tradition like that. The only reason I went to Michigan is because I was the only one smart enough in my family to get in. <laughs> We didn't watch at Michigan State. Your brother was nicer. Yeah, that's probably true, but we won more games against Michigan State. Your father went to state, too. And <laughs> probably with Muddy Waters or close to that era. He was and this is Muddy's debut as a coach. That's Thank right. Uh, my father was a little bit before Muddy Waters, but Muddy Waters had a great career at Michigan State as a player. But he is entering his first game as head coach against the Wolverines, and that's a little different story because he's got 100,000 people hanging around and... Uh, it's a whole different ball game when you're coaching against no, uh, this no, ball no, club. No, 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 no. 100,000 people doesn't mean a thing. They don't block. They don't tackle. They just make noise. That's, you got to do it on the that's field. That's what they say about Notre Dame, too, but somehow the Notre Dame people help out. Listen, Bo even <laughs> says that Michigan State is superior in one department. And they are. I think he has a point in the fact that the kicking game at Michigan State is just outstanding. Morton Anderson, their place kicker, and Ray Stackowitz, their senior punter. Stackowitz is an All-American choice, averaging 48 yards. And when they get inside the... 30 or 40 yard line, Michigan State is capable of scoring with Morton Anderson. And that's the big key, I think, to Michigan State's offense is the fact that they can play field position football with these two guys. Regardless of the outcome, it's great fun. Michigan State is my school. <laughs> Michigan is his school. You know now that objectivity is out the window. They're ready for the kickoff. Michigan State won the toss and has elected to receive. Otis Grant, number nine, goes deep. Bruce Reeves is back there with him, as is Number 27, defensive back Thomas Morris. And there's Ali Haji Sheik's kickoff sailing deep and through the end zone. No chance for a return. The lace is up. He moved it. Okay, green and white. <laughs> First and 10, Michigan. Michigan State 47 yard line. And Wangler looks for Alan Mitch short. But oh, that's incomplete. Mitchell was open deep behind Betts. Betts was open but couldn't hang on. Second and 10. Ball was there just a drop pass. That's usually fairly sure-handed, but ball just dropped. As the pass was there, Michigan State came with the blitz. It was picked up. Wangler had enough time to get him free. So we take a look at the Michigan State defense that has been run in quite a bit this year. Although there are some replacements in there already because of some injured players. Last week's contest against Notre Dame. Second and ten, Michigan. Wangler has Edwards and Ricks, and he gives the Ricks, and Ricks goes right down. Big hit by Johnny Lee Haynes. Came crashing through and had Ricks simultaneous with a handoff. Haynes has switched from linebacker to defensive line this past spring, and he's found a home. There, it's very simple. He just beats the block of John Powers, gets into the backfield. Loss on the play of four yards. It's third and 14. The ball back now on the Michigan 49-yard line. Most people it would expect pass in a situation like this. And Wangler gives them what they would expect. Over the middle, Anthony Carter dropped it. He was open, hit him right in the stomach, and bounced out. Well, that's two in a row Michigan has dropped. I can't blame Wangler at all. Both passes were there. Both passes just plain old dropped. Anthony comes on a post pattern. He comes underneath the deep coverage. He beats his one-on-one -on -one man over the middle, and Wangler throws a perfect strike, and you won't see this often. Anthony Carter just drops the ball. Mike Marshall in front of him, but certainly did not have him covered up. 
Don Bracken, the Michigan freshman putter, is set to kick to Thomas Morris, defensive back from Long Beach, California, and a good defensive back. Kick away from about the 40-yard line for Bracken, heading for the far sideline. Good bounce. Morris grabs it at the seven-yard line and is buried. They'll call it the uh, eight or nine right between it. No return at all. Good coverage by the Wolverines. Michigan State was unable to move the football, so let's pick up the action later in the quarter. First down, Michigan. Edwards, straight up the middle. Pops off the tackle. He gets just his shoulder from 32. Van Williams, it bounces off that for even more yardage. Michigan State is guessing on defense. That time they had three deep backs over on the side of Anthony Carter, and they ran the trap play with the fullback up the middle, and when Anthony broke the line of scrimmage, there was really nobody in that secondary to get him as he gets good yardage for the first down. First and 10, 15, 16-yard line of Michigan State. Michigan on the move. Lawrence Ricks, no room to run this time, and he is set back by John McCormick, number 40, among others. McAdoo, 55, and Morris are there, but John McCormick out of Marquette. Had him in his arms. No gain on the play, second and ten. Alan Mitchell checks in, and Fred Brockington comes out of the Michigan lineup. A little sunshine now. There was some rain earlier in the day, but the skies are beginning to clear. Looking like a good day. All right, both receivers now on the left side for Michigan. Carter in the slot. Mitchell further out. Ricks gets the handoff straight ahead. Near at the 10-yard line before he is met by a lot of white jerseys. Stevens. I think Michigan is running decoys out there. Anthony Carter and uh, Alan Mitchell spread wide left, and then they run back to the right side with Lawrence Ricks. If they break one of those at the line of scrimmage, the secondary is so spread out left that Ricks could possibly break through there and get into the end zone. I think that's what they're using Anthony Carter and Alan Mitchell for at this point. A little decoy action. Keep that secondary spread around. Third down and four. Yes, that is a hole in Larry Ricks' pants. 